As I'm sure is no surprise to any of us, we're living in a radically changing world time. What was is rapidly disappearing, and what is, who knows what is. But we see what's happened. The beginning of the book, you might say, was 9-11. And everything happens after that. 9-11 was essentially brought to us by the age of technology. It was Islam being afraid of technology, wanting to stop things, seeing that it was being encroached by technology and what it brought, which was the American idea of life and values and so forth. And the reaction was to strike the heart of America, supposedly, the World Trade Center. So we live in the age of technology. Is it going to control us or will we control it? That's the essential question. But technology is all around us. It's everything we are in a sense. The clothes we're wearing, the schools we go to, etc., etc is all technology driven. And it has linked up the world as never before. And what's happened with that? Not more peace, but more conflict. In terms of the financial institutions, government, corporations, what have you, it's all a race to the top. Not internationally, but globally. Who is going to be the global leader, the global power, the global government? All that is uh, under discussion, quote unquote, right now. But we see in that what? The systemic greed and corruption that brought us the financial system breakdown. And then the $700 billion bailout, without any restrictions, the banks could do as they wanted to do. And Alan Greenspan was very surprised that they acted in terms of self-greed. They didn't act in the long-term interests of their shareholders. So is any surprise then that we have the Occupy Wall Street movement, and with no agenda. What's to believe in? The Democrats, the Republicans, the Libertarians? What's to believe in? There's a systemic corruption and greed that everybody is asleep to, and young people are awake to because the American dream, as we have known it, is no more. The white middle class, the black middle class, the Asian middle class, all the middle classes that have made up America are shrinking. More than shrinking, they're losing their houses and more. So what to do about all this? Plato says that after democracy comes dictatorship. But do we live in a democracy? That's been challenged when we see all the numbers come out about the 1% versus the 99%. If we look at those numbers, perhaps it's not a democracy. It's a plutocracy government by the wealthiest. Some people like Warren Buffett, the multi-billionaire, have understood this and are trying to get his fellow billionaires to give back a part of their money for the good of society. And to some degree that's been successful, but not largely successful. The bankers and the politicians have more or less blown off Occupy Wall Street. 
a bunch of young kids out of work who are just narcissistically complaining. But it's much more than that because it's gone beyond Wall Street to more than 150 sites around the world. And that's increasing. Certainly with the incredible snowstorm coming, or it's already here, and winter, there's going to be a withdrawal probably for a while. But that withdrawal is for simply a preparation for what happens in the springtime where it won't be just Occupy Wall Street. My conjecture is it will be Occupy the world, but perhaps without an agenda, because the whole system is seen to be rotten. So if you change one little thing, well, what does that do? That's just so throwing crackers to the monkeys. What's going to happen out of this? I don't know, and I don't know anybody who does know. But I do know this, that the historical changes that are coming are radical, and they cannot be affected by you and I as individuals. We're too small. It's too big. What's called for is a new level of consciousness and intelligence. But for that, we're going to have to ask some strong questions, not of what's around us, not of the government and what have you, but ourselves. Am I occupied or am I free? If I'm occupied, what am I occupied with? That is, what are my concerns? What are my dreams? What are my ambitions? What do I expect from myself and other people? How have I been influenced by my parents and my peers? And so forth and so on. How do I know myself? How do I know myself when I am myself, so I think I am? If I just ask the question, where is it being asked from? It's being asked from my mind. What if my mind is basically what is called the formatory mind? The mind that we all know, it's always talking to us. It's always forming opinions, not nuanced, but black and white, that kind of mind. What if there is a mind behind that mind, a deeper mind, a mind of essence and being? But how to get to that if I'm always talking to myself, concerned about what's happening outside me to a place that I'm blanked out? If I look at myself in terms of attention, what happens with my attention? It's either outside myself, caught by some idea or thing that has interested me, or I'm indwelling in myself about what I said or what I did or what I should have done and so forth. My attention is not subject object. You're not looking at this picture and aware of yourself right now, are you? What happens is the attention very quickly goes back and forth between the outside and the inside, between the object outside and the object, subject, inside. And we don't see it. Why? Because though we look to have a body, we don't consciously inhabit the body. Of course, when that's said, one immediately has a sense of the body to one degree or another. But then what happens next? Doesn't the attention go back up into the head? go out uh, into the object, in this case, the speaker. What happened to the body? The amazing thing is we're essentially bodiless. That is, there's no awareness of the body. It's not occupied at all, except in fear, in desire, when I want to satisfy my intestinal organs, I want to eat. 
And as soon as that is taken care of, or even while it's being taken care of, how many people eat their food while watching television or reading a newspaper, so we're not actually even eating consciously. As soon as that is over, we're back up and out or in, walking around, sitting down. Who is it that's walking around and sitting down? Everyone would say, I. But who is this I? And can we explore that? Can we explore to what degree we're occupied and when we are free, etc. In future conversations, I hope to get into this. Thank you very much.